Without the Taiwanese English teaching system, this channel would simply not exist, nor would my life in Taiwan in general exist. So as a preface to anything I say in this video, I want to clarify that I do think the English teaching system here in Taiwan is good in places. It was certainly good to me and offered me a new life here in Taiwan when everything went wrong in the UK. But it has some serious problems that Taiwanese people, and in particular Taiwanese parents of students, may be not aware of. So in this video, I'll tell you exactly what I think of the Taiwanese English education system after 12 years working in the industry, and shed some light on the negative aspects of the industry, as well as highlighting some of the more positive aspects. And make sure you watch to the very end of the video to see whether or not I'm actually going to be giving up my YouTube channel and returning back to a career in teaching. So what types of English school are actually available here in Taiwan? Well, English education starts when kids enter kindergarten as young as three or four, despite the fact that teaching English in kindergarten is still illegal in Taiwan. Whether that's just the basics of English and the ABCs that are taught in the free government kindergartens, or in fact, a fully fledged bilingual international kindergarten where whole subjects might actually be taught in English in their ESL program, whether that's with a Taiwanese English teacher or in fact a foreign English teacher as some kindergartens will employ. And we'll get into the different types of English teacher that you'll find here in Taiwan a little bit later. But if you're wondering why English teaching is illegal in kindergarten, that's because of the perceived negative effect that it has on the national language of Chinese here in Taiwan. But illegal or not, English teaching does start here at kindergarten in Taiwan, and I've got countless stories from foreign teaching friends that have worked in kindergartens of having to scurry up to the rooftop or hide in a broom closet when government officials come to check that English is not being taught in certain kindergartens. But when you consider the fact that lots of these politicians and government officials have their own kids in these private or bilingual kindergartens, then a lot of it gets brushed under the rug or just allowed to continue. Once Taiwanese kids enter elementary school, they will begin compulsory English classes, usually with a local Taiwanese English teacher only covering the very basics of English, meaning that parents wishing to supplement their kids' English will head to what's known as a bushy band. And these cram schools, these bushy bands, are where things can start to get a little bit murky, a little bit dirty when it comes to the English education system here in Taiwan, because this is where English becomes a business. For every government elementary or high school there is in Taiwan, there are dozens and dozens of bushy bands within walking distance where the kids will go to study extra classes after they finish their normal government school. And depending on the cram school system, the kids will either stay an hour or two just to study English or one in particular subject, or in many cases, they'll attend what's called Anshin Ban, and they'll stay there for the whole afternoon, the whole evening, and can be there as late as eight, nine, or in some cases, 10 o'clock at night. And this is exactly the same type of school where I worked for my 12 years in the teaching industry, and I have to say, I absolutely loved it. I was given the freedom to teach the kids in a fun and light-hearted way by a boss who actually put the education of the kids and the happiness of her staff as a higher priority than her profits. But from speaking to many other foreign teachers that have worked in cram schools in Taiwan over the past 20 years or so, I think my experience was the exception to the rule. And many cram school bosses prioritize financial success and profits above that of the education of their kids or the happiness of their staff. So as you can imagine, every kid attending a cram school is gonna have a very different experience according to which cram school they attend and which boss is running that school. And my experience of teaching in cram school was primarily with elementary school age kids, but when kids enter junior high school, such as the one behind me, and even more so when they enter senior high school, it's a similar story, only with more and more pressure as university draws nearer and nearer. And it just means more and more time spent in bigger, more intense cram schools with a large focus on how to pass an English test with a high emphasis on grammar rather than actually how to use English when communicating with people from other countries. And as well as government schools and private cram schools teaching English, there are of course incredibly expensive international schools where you'll find that the kids of super rich businessmen or diplomats are educated wholly in English. But then there's a slightly cheaper but also quite expensive bilingual private schools where slightly less rich businessmen will send their kids to learn English. And while I can't talk too much on these schools from a personal teaching experience, I have heard stories of unscrupulous practices, again, depending on the owner and depending on the teachers they hire. So this brings me to my next point and the types of foreign English teacher that you will find teaching English here in Taiwan. And of course, as with any school and any subject, the teacher that you have teaching the subject 
will affect the kids' performance greatly. And of course, the majority of English teachers here in Taiwan are Taiwanese English teachers. There are undeniably some amazing Taiwanese English teachers here in the country, some of whom I worked with in my 12 years in the cram school industry, but also undeniably, there are some terrible Taiwanese English teachers, one or two of which I had the displeasure of working with during my time as a teacher, only for a short time until they were found out and were let go by my boss. But I don't want to talk too much about Taiwanese English teachers here in this video, because there is more than enough can be said in this video about the foreign English teachers here in Taiwan. The range of people coming from overseas to teach English here in Taiwan is simply huge. So for me to try and tell you every different kind of person that comes here would be impossible. So the most simple way to categorize them would be in these three ways. First of all, the ones who care about the kids' education against the ones who don't care about the kids' education. Secondly, there are those English teachers with a really good understanding of the language, with good English. And there are those with a very poor level of English. It's true. And finally, the ones who love their lives in Taiwan compared to the ones who dislike their life in Taiwan. Now, in most cases, if you fulfill two out of these three criteria, then you'll do a good job in teaching and give your kids a good experience. However, there are, in my opinion, a considerable amount of foreign English teachers here that don't care about their students, that don't have a good enough level of English, and don't actually like their life in Taiwan at all. They just see it as an easy place to live, an easy place to earn a decent salary, and use their foreign status, their foreign passport, to stay in a job where they're underperforming and can take advantage of an English teaching system that puts appearance and passport ahead of teaching ability and passion for the job. Yes, some bosses can identify these poor, underqualified, lazy teachers quite efficiently and get them out of the school before they affect the kids' education too much. But also, some schools are just so desperate for a foreign-looking English teacher because they've got pressure from parents who just care that their kids are being educated by a person that looks like they come from an English-speaking country. When in fact, there's a strong possibility there's a Taiwanese teacher out there that's more qualified, has more care, more passion for teaching, and could do a much better job than that lazy, arrogant foreign teacher. I'm really looking forward to the comments on this point down below because as viewers of mine, you are probably likely to have been taught by a foreign teacher as a kid when you were learning English, or indeed you have kids that are being taught by a foreign teacher. So again, let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there commenting, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers. But yes, this wide range and random nature of accepting almost anybody into the English teaching industry as a foreign teacher here in Taiwan could be considered a problem, but it's not the only problem. And I think the biggest problem is something that I touched upon earlier in the video. It's the fact that it's a business. I hate to say it, but no kids here are graduating from junior high or senior high school with a good level of English unless their parents have either paid out for extra cram school tuition or some other tutoring classes, or indeed the school is itself bilingual and the tuition is much higher than you get at a government school such as the one behind me. Learning English in Taiwan costs money and indeed makes money for the schools that are good at doing a good job of it. And this financial incentive attracts businessmen and entrepreneurs into entering the industry, opening up their own cram schools without the full knowledge of what it takes to run a good school or turn out good students. There is a very famous example right here in Taichung of one of the biggest nightclub KTV owners also owning and running one of the biggest international bilingual schools. And I'm sure the teachers and the managers of that particular school and others like it do a very good job and provide a good level of service and education to the kids. But I'm pretty sure that those two businesses aren't very well matched. But this just demonstrates how if there's money to be made in Taiwan, then all sorts of people will get involved with it and possibly corrupt it. And while we're on the subject of corruption, another problem with the English teaching system here in Taiwan is that kids are not allowed to fail, particularly in Bushiban. I know of schools where the lowest mark you're allowed to give a student on a quiz is 88%. Even if they have absolutely no idea what they're doing in the quiz, the lowest mark you can give a student is 88%. If the parents see that their kid's score is falling below an acceptable level, they'll just take their kid out of that cram school and put them into another one. Therefore, the cram school's answer to this is just fake the grades, give the kids a higher grade than they deserve, worry about the consequences this will have on the kids' education later, and keep taking the money unscrupulously 
from the parents, which of course is going to make more money for the school in the short term, but has drastic effects on the kids' education long term. Again, this relates back to my original point that money and financial success is much more important than the education of the kids to many private schools here in Taiwan. And as long as the kids' parents don't understand English also, then it's much easier to pull the wool over their eyes. But of course, it's not all bad, and there are some great benefits to the English education system here in Taiwan. The first of which is that people can actually speak English here in Taiwan. Infinitely more people can speak English here than people can speak Chinese in my home country of the UK. And the fact that it is a business could also be considered a benefit because in the UK where language is not so much of a business and we just rely on our government schools to teach us French, German or Spanish is not a successful system at all. So paying for English as they do here in Taiwan is definitely better than the way our system works back in the UK. Not to mention the cram schools that are genuinely putting the education of their kids first. My old cram school, for example, had a really good system where they would log any kids that were falling behind. If I felt there was some kid that had a problem with a particular concept, then I would register it in the catch up and review book and a Taiwanese teacher would take them through it and make sure that they knew exactly what was going on so that they didn't fall behind in my class. They didn't, however, have foreign teachers do this. I'm not too sure whether that was cost effective to give a free catch up and review session to a kid with a foreign teacher. I'm getting soaked by this sprinkler. But yeah, my point is not all cram schools are bad and there are some cram schools to put education first and really want the kids to do well. Another benefit of the English education system here in Taiwan is that it does give kids the opportunity to interact with foreigners more often than they would do in their daily lives. Taiwan is not by any means a multicultural country and therefore it's unlikely for kids to come across a foreigner on a daily basis during their daily lives unless of course their parents are a little more affluent take them overseas, take them to Western countries more often. So having a foreign teacher telling stories of their home country and experiences from all around the world of the different countries that they've traveled to can really help to open the eyes and open the minds of the kids and develop their understanding and accepting of other cultures. Accepting? Acceptance. Ah! I have a couple of stories from my time of teaching when I would share my culture and my stories with the kids in my class. And I remember one example where I was telling them I went to see the doctor in South Africa and I overheard one kid whisper to his friend in Chinese, Feito yo isemma. He had no idea that Africa even had doctors. He thought Africa was this wild place full of uh, lions and tigers, so to speak. And uh, talking of which, another story where I was told by my boss I had to stop telling the kids that in South Africa, they use giraffes to clean the windows on the second and third floors of buildings with their tongues because the kids were going home and insisting to their parents that uh, giraffes are used as window cleaners in South Africa. So yeah, sometimes I got a bit wild with my stories, but again, just proves the point that uh, international teachers or foreign teachers do bring some interesting stories and cultures and open-mindedness to the kids even if we do uh, tell them one or two porky pies. But yes, generally speaking, meeting people from different countries with different stories and life experiences from around the world can only be of benefit to the kids here in Taiwan on top of learning their English from a native English speaker. Unlike me, of course, who learned my French from a Scottish lady whose English and French was pretty unintelligible to me. So did I leave my teaching job because of all these problems I encountered in my general hatred and dislike of the teaching industry here in Taiwan? No, not at all. I loved my career in teaching. I taught for the same school for 12 years from 2008 to 2019 and was made to feel a real valuable part of the team in my school. But when YouTube came along and proved much more lucrative than a career in teaching, I simply had to make the change. Talking of which, a career that is, there is very little room for career development as a foreign English teacher here in Taiwan. Unless, of course, you go down the route of opening up your own cram school, which is not only going to prove very risky, but still going to need a Taiwanese person probably to help you out with all of the business side of things. And then there's the other option of becoming a manager or a trainer in one of the bigger cram school chains, where your salary might be a little bit higher, but actually that extra salary that you earn as a manager or trainer could easily be matched as a normal foreign English teacher and just pick up one or two extra one-on-one -on -one tutoring classes every week where people pay you privately and boost your salary up. Anyway, it's difficult to get rich as a foreign teacher here in Taiwan. And if I'm completely honest, as my YouTube channel was growing, it would have been possible for me to entertain two jobs and have a dual income. 
if I was prepared to do a slightly substandard job as a teacher. But when I found myself thinking of YouTube while teaching and using my class preparation time to write subtitles and edit videos, I knew that it was time for me to take a break from the teaching and give somebody else the chance, somebody with more passion, more dedication to teaching, the chance to take over my class, whilst also giving myself a chance at YouTube to grow my YouTube, make more money for mine and William's future. So January the 1st, 2020, I made the leap from teaching into full-time YouTubing, and so far, I haven't looked back. So to answer the question I asked at the very start of the video as to whether or not I'm gonna quit YouTube and go back to teaching, the answer is no, not yet anyway. YouTube is still giving me lots of opportunities that teaching didn't offer me, but without that job of teaching, without teaching for 12 years in Taiwan, I wouldn't have fallen in love with the country and thus fallen in love with the idea of sharing my life and experiences on YouTube for you guys here in Taiwan and indeed for anyone around the world that wants to take an interest in this wonderful little country of ours. But of course, nothing lasts forever. And if YouTube were to come to an end or people were to stop watching, then I would be honored to go back into the Taiwanese English teaching system and do my little bit for the kids here wanting to learn English. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to comment down below with your opinion, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, or think that I'm talking an absolute load of BS, as some people would like to say, but yeah. Time for me to say goodbye and remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So check whether you've hit that subscribe button and hit it if you haven't already. Help me out, get me up to that uh, 350,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Enough for now, time for me to say goodbye. So thanks for now and as always, I'll see you next time on My Life in Taiwan. Peace, bye-bye.